Welcome everyone. Thank you again for showing up for you for our Unleash Your Higher Purpose series. So today I'm so excited to introduce yet another incredible inspirational speaker, Christine. Thank you for being here. Let's dive in with some questions like right off the bat. I want to just dive in and get into the good stuff and really hopefully inspire some of you who are watching and or listening so that you can propel yourself into meaningful action. So let's get started. So Christine, yes, tell us, who are you? I know that's a big question in and of itself, but what, do you, what is it that you do? What, how would you say your purpose is lived out in your life? Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for having me. I'm super excited to be here. You know, I am, I'm a little bit of the rare breed when I knew I would be an entrepreneur from a young age. Mm -hmm. uh, and yet I had no idea what it would look like. And I would tell you, I never imagined the three businesses I have today would be the path I trod. And it really came down to, you know, a recognition that, that truly it is about helping people create impact. And I watch so many amazing, inspiring people, get really stuck, especially when you hit that mid forties or uh, up level where it's like, you know, I'm living by everybody else's labels. Uh, you know, I was successful in my career. I was a sister. I was a daughter. I was a wife. I was a bonus mom. And I was all these things. And truthfully, I started to get lost in that box. Yeah. Until life hit me with a very big plot twist on my career front. And I was out on the mat for quite a while because I lost myself. And I was like, who am I if I'm not anchored by this? And then a light bulb went off in a conversation that changed my life. Just a small spark it was like, it always struck me as someone who wanted to do something for yourself. Do you want to have a conversation? And I was like, I did not get out of bed on Wednesday to start a business. So if you're sitting listening today, that might be you. I will tell you, I wasn't prepared on Wednesday, but by Friday morning, I swanned into the kitchen in the morning until my then fiance. Uh, so babe, I started a business. He's like, you did what? Like, we have had a conversation around this and <laughs> truthfully, it didn't occur to me to have one, but uh, that's just a single girl legacy. But to be fair, what it really was, was like, I could focus on the possibilities and create something for myself. So what I do now, I'm a business coach who helps people make a business successful on their own terms, because mm. ladies and gentlemen, there is no box. You get to create the life you want and you can reset it, reboot it any time you like and sometimes you choose the timeline to that and in my case I haven't always had to choose that I just had to respond to some major shifts that were happening with okay well I get to stay down or I get to choose to get up I hope my story inspires you to get up and yeah. just jump into something unknown and figure it out as you go along that's beautiful. So for you, when you when you kind of made that transition and you discovered, okay, this is something's missing, something's missing, something's missing. What would you I'm trying to think of how I'm asking the question because I feel like there's a million questions all packed in there, but I'll try to stay on tangent here, um, on topic, I should say. Um when did you kind of figure out this is what I'm really good at? And how because people I, I think of the people that are watching this and I think, you know. We tend to think, and it's not true, but we tend to think that we're going to be walking along and do, 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 oh, there's my purpose. Yay, I've been looking for you. And then we're going to put it in our sack and away we go. Um, there is no path. There is no simple, straightforward solution. So for you, I guess, what was that like to be like, wait a second, things are actually aligning now. It feels better. What, what was that like for you? How did that happen? You're right. I did not get out of bed saying, oh, this is it. In truth, it came because other people recognized things I took for granted as a skill. Mm. And I had started my first business. I was building it one hour a day as a side hustle. It was really about creating initially that first business, a bit of additional income because my husband didn't have great health and I had aging parents on two sides and thought, I want to be more present. And I need to be able to turn on a dime if we're in the hospital. And that was my reality I was living in at the time. So I created a side hustle to create my goal was a thousand dollars a month. And, but I was doing it one hour a day. And so while the kids and my husband watched friends or a Netflix rerun, I went and built my business. And not all of that one hour was like one hour in 60 minutes. It was five minutes here, 10 minutes here. So don't right. believe you can't do that guys. I will tell you, I'm calling BS on that. But it was through that, that people started to say, you seem to be having more success than I am. And I watched friends who were trying to side hustle, do the hokey pokey. 
one foot in, one foot out. And they were constantly exhausted and constantly overwhelmed and not seeing results. And that's really common. It's a pattern I see. And it comes down to the fact you don't know what to focus on. You're not committed to staying in activity because it is easier to stay in movement than to constantly start it from zero. So whatever path you're choosing in life, just note, stay in movement. I committed to one hour because I could, that was my limit, but I stayed in it one hour a day and my business was doubling every year. And people started to ask me about it. What are you doing? And I responded by saying, I treat my business like a business because I had spent my career in business and I had two degrees in it and I knew it and just know it inside out. It's my skill set. And people started to say, okay, could you tell me how to do, what that means? Because it sounds good, but I obviously don't have this figured out. And could you help me? And I was like, yes. And then the weirdest thing started to happen. They're like, okay, well, now I get it. I see it. I really can't do this by myself. Could you help? I was like, yes. And then the weirdest thing, path continues, dominoes start to fall. They're like, I would like to pay you for support. And I was like, this is fascinating. Mm. And it really was like, I didn't set out to find this purpose. It wasn't a destination, but it was other people recognizing skills in my toolkit that I didn't realize were unique to me because I just knew this. I had spent a career learning and, and I just acquired it, like felt like osmosis almost, but Mm. there was other people that could value that. And when other people valued it, I I was like, well, I I just want to help. I just want to serve. How can I help my friends and my peers and my people just succeed? And that was the catalyst for obviously the business I have today, which is significant in size and it is a full-time passion for me. But it was from observation of other people because you can't see what makes you brilliant on your own. It's very, very, very challenging. And just because you're great at something doesn't mean that has to be your purpose. And, you know, and I think that was part of it too, because I didn't really know I was in alignment until later Mm. it took me leaning into it it took me getting visible about it it took me making mistakes and doing life messy and uh, you know as the business evolved and as more and more people started to really I kind of would say almost come towards me saying I'd I'd like to be around your ecosystem you your community uh in your networks like how we met it was really like ah And then when I started to work with people and see their lives change, like it is the most beautiful gift to run shotgun on somebody's dreams you can ever imagine. It's enormous amount of trust that they put in me and it's fun. And I'm like, I celebrate their successes more than my own day to day. And that's what I'm like, that's what I know I'm in purpose. I feel lit up. I don't see energy at all. It is just, I can tap into it in a second. And I'm like, that's what I know I'm in purpose, but it's a journey. And one that I needed guidance, help, and feedback to get to. Mm. I got goosebumps because you're so bang on with that. And, and it leads me to ask another question because you and I both know, and, and you know, as you were talking now, I'm like, I wish I had found you even six, seven years ago when I was doing the hokey pokey myself, like over and over and over. Well, maybe we'll try my finger this time and maybe we'll try my toe. Like it just didn't work. Um, But the reality is when we choose to go for it, when we get into the arena, which I talk about a lot, there is, even before you get in and when you're in, both before and during, there is all of the mindset challenges that come up. And I know you and I have touched on this before in our conversation I know there's a lot of, this is going to be predominantly women that are listening or watching. There'll be men too, but it's the stories we tell ourselves, like who am I to, or, you know, what if I fail or my husband would never support me or, or, or. So given that you have, you've gone all in, you've found your way through the arena and obviously you still encounter challenges. I mean, you're only human from what I could tell. (laughs) So um, tell us, how do you navigate through those tough times and really come up standing strong? I I think the first thing is you've got to know that there's a community around, even if Mm. you're not not part of it yet. So when I very first started my business, and I did this before I did the coaching, I created a community of entrepreneurs because while I didn't feel a need to go and have a peer group initially, I knew the reason why my friends were struggling with the hokey pokey is they didn't have community. They Mm. didn't have cheerleaders. They didn't have people that said, 
let's go build empires and yeah, let's go. That, so I created community. And if you don't know yet what you want to do, I will just tell you, just have to have faith in the universe that there is a tribe out there for you. And you should be actively seeking that because there's, there's people that come into your life for a season, a lifetime. And, you know, I, I will tell you most of my friendship, like the ones I have my longest life, none of them are entrepreneurs. None of them. They don't understand me at all. They're supportive, but they, like, I, I'm, there's a weird person on another planet for them most days and they love me for it. And I love them for the fact that <laughs> you've done the same thing for 30 years in your career. Fascinating to me, yeah. but the tribe is important and finding community is important and, and having an inner circle that is not just your fam. And I mean, they should just, it just be a given that they have your back and that every wild dream you want is possible. If they're not your, that's not them. They're not the right people. Keep looking. But then they're also the one who call you to rise. Yes. And when you get scared, and I just had this exact conversation last night, I'm like, I have someone who is a real good peer. She's like, you are living short of what's possible for you. I want to show you how I see you. And it's hard to listen to that. It's very in focus in the lens, but it is truth. And you can feel it inside. And so community has really been important to that. Grace has been important to that and realizing I'm a hot mess and work in progress and I'm allowed to be that. I'm allowed to be really epically awesome. <laughs> and then the other days I'm going, I'm scared like a duck, swan swimming with my feet paddling hard. But I also really am really mindful and I have post-its and reminders all around my office to keep me on track, which is to be successful in life, not just as a business, but as life. There's a really simple thing, show up as a human. And I'll remind myself to do that. It's harder on the softer sides where I'm feeling like a hot mess. I'll be honest, it's still a work in progress. But I remember the reason I show up to help other people and why I have to get out of my own way is because if somebody is in trouble and is struggling, in my case, it's the business world, and I know I can be a guide, mm. selfish for me to stay in my head and get in my way, I need to remember the, the the world, the universe calls me to simply show up and be a footprint for them or to turn a light on or to see them. And so I remind myself, every success in life is built by being a good human because we are all driven by the same things, whether you want to build a business or just be a great wife, daughter, sister, friend, yeah. contributing human, we're all driven by the same things. We want to know our time mattered. We want to know that we're connected to something bigger and we want to make a difference to those that we care closest for friends or friends you choose and family. It's so important to remember that. And so I have visual reminders. I have a community that supports me and I work at it yeah. all the time. <laughs> so I was, I was sharing with someone else recently that I used to think in my naive mind, when I started out that once you get to that level, you're good. You just fly <laughs> along. And then I've learned like, oh no, you get up that little like pinnacle of the mountain and then you're like, oh God, look at what's in front of me. So it's an ongoing evolution and, but the strength and the resiliency and the, the fulfillment that comes from just the journey. Like you said, I, I love that. The, the um, trash is always the same, whether, you know, you're making your first $10, your first hundred thousand, your first billion, I would tell you the trash is the same. What changes is your ability to recognize it, see it. And minimize the amount of control and length of time that control has over you. I, you know, I said imposter syndrome, the one that all of us, especially women, I know this audience is primarily women. You know, here's the fascinating stat: 75% of high achieving women, and I mean high achieving in anything, right. in mother, in, in, in any capacity, 75% of us don't think we need to deserve a set of seat at the table. And we feel like we don't belong there. 75%. So, you know, we're successful and we're still trying to feel like we don't belong that is not going to go away the higher you reach what is going to change is your ability to say oh, you're right when somebody says you're ridiculous you're going to go okay maybe i'll hear you this time yeah <laughs> keep telling me <laughs> yeah you're I mean, getting it now <laughs> yeah and then um, sometimes you're scared and go please tell me again that i'm gonna be okay and they're like oh god you're gonna be okay thank you <laughs> thank you it's so powerful to have that tribe around you. I, I, I agree with you a thousand percent. Um, you kind of touched on this before, and I want to just bring this forward because what I've said in a lot of the other interviews too, is that 
women particularly, of course, men as well, but mainly I see it a lot in women is we all have a gift or multiple gifts really. But the tendency is I have this gift. I don't want to brag. I don't want to look like I'm tuning my horn. I don't want to be like all that. So I'm going to put it over here. I'm going to put it on the shelf. It looks pretty in there, but eventually it's going to collect dust. It's going to turn out to be useless. So I really want to celebrate our gifts. I really want to inspire women everywhere to just say, hey, this was given to you. This is unique to you. This is what you get to utilize to create an impact in the world. So in light of that, that there's no such thing as bragging and ego based, like I'm all that. This is about what's inherently within you that you get to share with the world. So Christine, my question to you is what is that thing, that gift that you've been able to hone and, and grow and, and honor in your own life? You know, I, I think for me, this is based on what other people tell me. That's a perception mm -hmm. of me is that I see people mm -hmm. and the dream, big dreams that you have, I believe they're possible. And so you can call that empowerment. You can call that um, inspiration if you want. But to me, you know, the thing that I always am mindful of is I've survived everything that has been given to me. There's a lot of chapters I wouldn't want to go and repeat. Let's be clear. And you're probably in the same boat. But it's a choice to believe in the possible. And, you know, when I look at with what, when I do in the world, you know, Everyone says, you know, the, being around you feels like sunshine. You're there to lift people. You're there to see people. I said, I will tell you, you're not crazy. And sometimes I know clients have come to work with me. And when we've done the work and we've spent time, they look back. I said, no, like, look back now, honestly, why did you choose me? You're the first person who said my dreams were possible. Mm. And then we're, we're, we're with me to help me do it. And I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, I said, I'm a person who gets to hold your hand on the journey of your biggest dreams. It's an amazing gift and it's an amazing amount of trust. But to me, the thing that it took me some time to realize is all of the lessons I learned, the knives in my back, the challenges, the setbacks, the celebrations, the real big ripples I've cast in my career and in my circle of influence were not in service of me being great. Right. They were there because I needed to be able to lead somebody else through that storm. And so that's what I do. I lead people through the storm of chasing their dreams. And it took a big shift to say, you know, it's because I chose like you need to every day. You, you choose to survive this. But what if the, the struggles you've had, the insights you've had, the wonderful successes you've had have never been about you. They've been about mm -hmm. legacy, impact, creating ripples. When you know that and you think that and you sit on it and you reflect on it, you choose to rise every day in that purpose and say, this isn't, this is bigger than me. Yeah. It's bigger than me. And this is the role I was cast. And I said, I'm, I'm not the sending thank you cards <laughs> to, the, to the people that have helped shape me who I am. But I absolutely know that you're never ahead. You're never behind in your season. Mm. You're exactly where you need to be. And right now I said, you know, this, this feels a, a really exciting time, just particularly for me in my story, because I feel really rooted. And, and I really have gotten clear that it's okay to want something for yourself. When I first started my business, it's a funny story, I'll tell you quickly, and, and, and uh, it might be entertaining. When I first started my business, the thing I said to my husband when I told my, or my fiance at the time that I was gonna start a business, he's like, why? And I was like, I need it, I need it for me. And I needed it for me because I was feeling very lost in all the labels of society at that time in my life. And I needed something. I wanted to put down roots in myself. Yeah. As the business evolved, I started to, um, move into a metamorphosis where I thought I was doing this for other people. And I got really comfortable saying it was for them. Like women, hello, we're always in service of other people. It was okay if I wanted to do this to help my husband. It was okay if I wanted to just help my parents. And then COVID hit and my business was growing by leaps and bounds. My husband ended up in the same office as me in my home office. And he'd never spent that much time because he worked in an office and I was always working from home. He's like, I need to just check you for a second because I've heard you say this a couple of times that you do your business for the family. 100% of family loves who you are in your business because you are so lit up. You're so on fire. You're so inspiring and you're really making a difference. We love you, but this business is not for us. This business is for you and how it makes you feel and the legacy you want to create. And I was like, ooh, it was so hard to hear this. So like, look at your vision board. 
Mm -hmm. That vision board is not us. That vision board is the impact you want to make much wider than the family. Yes, the family is part of the experience, but the vision, the heart is not the family. The vision is the impact you individually want to make while you're here and the people's lives you will touch. We are one of them. And it was a very interesting shift because I was like, you're right. I lost that. I really was doing this because I wanted a bit of me. And when you were questing to where you want to go, I've listened to so many amazing women, women in my peer group, in my networks, other business owners. One of the biggest shifts they always talk about, the moment I felt free, the moment I started to make more impact is when I realized I needed to, to do this for me. It's not selfish to do things for yourself. That's absurd. The first person you must take care of is you. I will also tell you the one person who will always, 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 I mean, on this earth that has your back is you. Don't forget that. Never Mm. hesitate to bet on yourself. You do not have to have the answers before you start. In fact, none of us do. (laughs) We are all just making it up as we go along. And you know that because, you know, when you make the realization that your parents are just a hot mess because they were just trying to figure it out, give yourself the same grace. (laughs) Because your kids probably have thinking about you now. It's like, I'm just a hot mess trying to figure it out. But it's important. Wow. Yeah, that's so powerful. Thank you. you. You've got me right in the, ooh. so I'm trying to be like, okay, we're good. We're okay. Uh, Let it <laughs> they, flow. All emotions yeah, are good. <laughs> they are. And, and that is the beauty of allowing yourself to be who you are. You were not created to just pay bills and die and have no meaning in your life. You were created. You, you exist. Your worth is not attached to anything, but the fact that you're here, you exist, you matter. So anyway, I could talk all day about that. Uh, what would be I mean you're a coach and you know you like me are big on taking action always right so what would be something that our audience can do to move from idea to implementation to move from sort of absorbing and seeking this information to actually creating transformation and change in their life something small and simple that they could do today I think for me, the biggest shift needs to happen when getting clear and being able to articulate, even if it's a whisper, what do you want? Mm. Because, and I have an exercise that will help you guys do this. It's going to be going to be my gift to you. But this is really important because we all know, and there's a terrible culture about the complaints of what we don't want. Um, yes. God, it's like a pastime, uh, a, not a very healthy one, to be honest, but it's a pastime. And the big shifts in the universe happen when you get clear on what you do want. And I always say to people when they, this is one of the reasons this is where the magic talk about, you know, with the zone of genius, I said, what is it that you do want? And they're like, I don't know. Like, I will hold the space with you. You actually do that little girl inside you, the little boy inside you knows and you hear it, you're ignoring it, the universe will eventually rock you sideways until you start paying attention and probably repeatedly, because we're not that observant, we're not that committed to it, but you know, you actually do know. What you're scared to do is say it, because when you say it, it makes it real and you need to start moving because then you feel like I I, I feel called and, and listen to it, but you've got to start spending the time. What do you want? And here's the big hint. It is not a job title. It is not a salary uh, range. That is not how your worth is determined. You are worthy simply because you're here and no one else is like you. And so you need to trust there was not a mistake here. <laughs> like this was intentionally who you are. So find your people, but get clear on what you want because the moment you have clarity, you will accelerate. Mm. And the reason you feel stuck is because you are not allowing the natural acceleration to happen. We are always growing. Our cells are always turning over. We're always taking in new breath. That's always the renewal of just our whole ecosystem of life. Mm. So what do you want? Breathe it in and go with it. I want people to get really focused on what do you want? It's okay to whisper it Mm. until you're ready to roar it. And when you need to roar it, find people to help you on the journey. The, this belief that we have to do things on our own is so unhealthy and unnecessary. We are actually connected to people for a reason. And people always want to know the how, right? So you're like, okay, great. great I got clear. Now, how do I do it? The how is the wrong question to ask. And this is why people get stuck because they're like, I, there's a million ways to do house. And then I'm like the land of Google. 
doesn't help you. What you really need to know is who do I need on my journey? Because the who will help you accelerate. You do not have to figure it out all on your own. You can go find tribes. You can go find support. You can have people who have higher energy, who call you to higher energy. Our natural state is quite high. Right. It's not the complaint cycle. That's why you feel kind of, ugh. that's choiceful. You can move anytime you want. I invite you to, in fact. So powerful. So do tell us, you hinted at it. What is your free gift then? So I have put together a bundle and it's two things that we're going to really help you unleash your superpowers. And they are two tools that I use in my life. So I'm going to walk my walk here. The first one is an exercise, which is about visualizing your future. And it is something every client who wants to work with me has to do before they start working with me. Mm -hmm. And it's that clarity piece. What do you want? It's not the labels. It's not the job titles. It's not the salaries. But you as a person, what do you like to do? How do you like to play? Let's get some time clarity on that. So that's the first resource in the bundle. The second one is you're going to have to go meet some cool people because maybe your tribe isn't the right one yet. And you're going to have to go make some friends with strangers. Don't listen to your mother. Making friends with strangers is okay. But it's going to be a, a tip sheet on virtual networking because whether you want to build a business, it doesn't matter. What I want you to do is be surrounded by people who rise together. Mm. And this is going to remind you about the first impressions you make when you're showing up because you, you never get a second chance to make a first impression. So how can we make a great one mm. when we're out making friends with strangers? So there's two resources that I think will help you regardless whether you're in business or not, because they are people, human things that will help you feel more connected, more purposeful, more in alignment, and also more in control. And one of the things that you know happens when you're in that level of I want to go somewhere and I want to feel unleashed and I want to step into my potential is that I feel out of control. Control is an illusion. This will help give you structure. And the structure might give you the courage to do life messy. Welcome to the human race. I was going to say, there <laughs> is no other way. It's messy. Just Roll up your sleeves. Let's get in there. So before we uh, before we close off, Christine, do you have any, I guess, from your heart, words of wisdom, anything you just would love to wrap our session with a pretty bow with? Yeah, and this is this is just sort of my life philosophy. I never look, and this is something you can take even if you're not a business owner. I never look for clients. I look for problems to solve, ways I can contribute, and people to serve. And when you do that abundance flows to you. And so I would ask you to be thinking about, yes, give yourself permission to live the life. Be yourself, give yourself permission to be the catalyst. I said, I don't look for things. I stay in what I know I can serve at and abundance flows to me as a result and it can to you too. So remember your dreams are worthy. Your dreams are worthy. You do not have to justify them to anybody ever. <laughs> Boom. Did anyone feel that? I just felt the mic drop. Boom. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you so, so much, Christine. Just, just your wisdom, your passion, your power, it just shines through. And I know it's making a difference for all kinds of people. So for those of you watching and or listening, thank you for showing up for you. And we hope that these words are just going to hopefully change the trajectory of, of your life. So you can also step into the arena, get messy, and just live a life on fire. So thank you. And thanks so much, Christina. So My appreciate it. Pleasure.